All right, so today I'm going to be focusing in the Southeastern and Southeastern Asian unit, um, unit eight, and I'm going to be focus on, focusing on number 211, which is The Great Wave by the artist Hakusai, part of the series of the 36 views of Mount Fuji. So to start off the class, I would begin by asking a few discussion questions just to kind of get them going, get them talking and thinking about the artwork. Um, so I would ask some basic questions like what are the first elements you notice in the work? Why do you think you notice them first? And maybe kind of have them explain that if it's a smaller group, if it's a larger group, I might have them correspond with a partner, maybe write down some answers or maybe have a short discussion afterward with the whole class and kind of have people share their answers. Um, I also like the idea of asking what image they think may have been drawn or occurred before this or what they think maybe happened before this wave started going up or what they think may be happening after the wave goes down. Is there, you know, that kind of suspense that's seen throughout the artwork? Um, you could also talk about that more when you're actually going through the analysis of the artwork. Um, and then I'd also just ask them what they find interesting about the artwork. Do they think it's, do they think it's interesting? Why or why not? Do they see a purpose in the artwork? What do they think about the artwork? And then the fourth question would be, what materials or medium do you think the artist could have used? A lot of times they get stuck on the focus of an oil on canvas or acrylic on canvas, especially when we think back to the very large units of early and later Europe and Americas. So it's interesting to see them kind of deviate from that medium and try to kind of figure out what other types of mediums artists used and how they used them and why they used them. So the visual analysis is the first thing. So these are basically the elements that we see in the work. So we see the use of blue and white. Um, we understand that it's a polychrome woodblock print, uh, otherwise known as a Yukioe print with the use of ink and color on paper. Elements that are incorporated within the work are line, shape, color. You could even say form is incorporated. We notice the large waves. We notice the three boats. We notice that Mount Fuji is present. We see those elements. We see a lot of neutral colors as well along with the blue. We also see this kind of neutral here in the boat. We see the neutral in the Mount Fuji in the background. And even the background itself has a neutral concept to it. Then we see the contrast from the heavy dark foreground as it recedes into the background. So discussing the idea of perspective here as well and that idea of linear perspective that kind of moves a little into content. We use that idea of the closer something is to you, the darker it is, the more prominent it is, the larger it is, the more detailed and defined it is. And as it recedes into the background, similar to this artwork, it starts to kind of fade. So we see this kind of gazing gray color here and our eyes kind of slowly drawn back as the details get less as we head towards Mount Fuji. We would also discuss how it kind of seems to vanish, how the artwork, the wave seems to look like it could almost swallow up Mount Fuji. And do we think that could actually happen? Moving into content, talking about the composition itself. So all the compositions within the series would actually frame Mount Fuji in some way within the artwork. It doesn't necessarily completely make it the center focal point of the artwork, but it does frame it somehow, somewhere. So in this case, we see the wave kind of framing the artwork along with this boat here. In other um, prints throughout the series, they may be sectioned a little bit differently. Um, and then seeing how the mountain seems to be dwarfed in the background with this overwhelming proportion of the waves in the foreground. So once again, his kind of skewed Hakusai skewed use of perspective here, that idea of linear perspective, but using it in kind of a skewed manner. And then finally, the context analysis. So Hakusai went by a lot of names as an artist when he was growing up. He would often change his name. So there's a lot of artwork out there that is unknown sometimes because they do not, they're not able to reference it to Hakusai, or if they are able to connect it to him, it's through a different name. Um, he created this version, this Japanese version of the idea of linear perspective. Even though this is an Asian-inspired artwork, though, he has a lot of influence from the Dutch art, which we see through the use of the low horizon line and the use of his Prussian blues and whites in his artwork and throughout the series as a whole. The use of Mount Fuji is considered one to be the highest mountain in Japan. It was also considered very sacred to the Japanese people. But to the artist himself, Hakusai, he also had a personal fascination with the mountain. So the view of it is actually featured in each 36 artworks throughout the series. Um, 
and that was part of his personal kind of aesthetic throughout the work. The artist was also interested in the use of oblique angles and kind of these geometric forms and this contrast of near and far, the use of depth and perspective, as well as this contrast between man-made and natural kind of juxtaposing the idea of realism versus abstract. Obviously, we can tell this is a wave, we can tell this is a mountain, we can tell this is a boat, but the way that he designs it, it almost could be seen as a cartoon, the wave right here, how to, how it's stopped and how the waves are kind of defined along with this kind of natural man-made looking boat. So it's very interesting how he does that, how he kind of meshes both these abstract and realist pieces. Um, the work also focuses on the daily life of the Japanese people. As we move into the comparative analysis, we'll see a little bit more of that about kind of their daily lives of people from all social classes, from the low ranking to the middle class to the high class. He liked to not just necessarily focus on courtesans or high-ranking royals. He liked to focus on the people of everyday life within Japan. So a similar comparative analysis that I would use in this work would be another view of Mount Fuji, one of the works within the series. So this one is the Shore of Tago Bay. It is part of the 36 Views series. Um, I liked this artwork as a comparative because I felt like it used the boats. It kind of had the water similar into the foreground as the wave, but it had that Mount Fuji kind of in the background, and it uses the same elements. So we see the wave here with the boat. So the boat kind of rides the wave up, which then takes our eye back to Mount Fuji, and the same is done here in the foreground. We see the boat kind of taking our eye, and we don't necessarily have the wave, but the tip of that boat up there kind of draws our eye up and then back to Mount Fuji. So I kind of like that, how it uses the boats and the elements within the foreground to draw our eyes back to the background. But then we also see this strong middle ground here, even though it's not very defined. We see these kind of fishermen and these people doing their everyday job along the shoreline here. Um, so there's a lot of different comparisons here, but there's also a lot of differences as well that could work well in the use of a comparative essay or just comparing the artworks in general. Another artwork that it can be compared with in a cross-cultural concept would be the Slave Ship uh, by Joseph Mallard William Turner. This was created in 1840, so we're also getting a somewhat similar time period. Um, this is an oil on canvas, so we're getting a difference in medium. Um, they both are abstract. This would be considered maybe more of an expressionist abstract, where this is a little bit more defined abstract um, because it's mixed with that realism. They both tell a story. They both have a narrative behind them, so that could be discussed as well as part of a comparative analysis. And also the coloring that was used here. Here we see a lot of fire, a lot of kind of anger, which would be comparative to this because we're throwing slaves overboard to get the insurance. It's kind of very horrific what's going on here, just as here with the colors that are alluded to the scene. It's kind of calming, but it's also very suspense suspenseful in the use of its work. So that was a good comparative analysis. I also like to use video analysis. A lot of times I'll use them within my work, either at the beginning of the work or at the end um, either from the Khan Academy website or the Smart Art History website. But this first video was actually a video that the other art teacher and myself created for this that kind of mocks that of a Khan Academy video. So I'm going to go ahead and show that now. We're here in Japan looking at an artwork that's over 200 years old. Well, it's actually a woodblock print, so it's one of many put into production that would have been sold to really whoever wanted one. That's right. This is a polychrome woodblock print that the artist Katsushika Hokusai made, then used ink to transfer over the image on the paper, so these could be mass-produced. Not unlike some of Andy Warhol's lithographs. Exactly. This could actually be considered a prelude to some of the later lithographs. Yes, even a forerunner to the graphic arts. And there would have been many, many of these put into production. At one time, it said that that so many of these images were made, and they were so common in the streets of 19th century Europe, that people were throwing them out because they were so common and cheap. Yes, it's, it's such a shame, really, because now it's one of the most iconic images of older Japanese artwork. I mean, who doesn't know or hasn't heard of the Great Wave, even if they don't know the proper name under the wave off Kanagawa that the artist had named it, people have heard the title The Great Wave. 
So another interesting fact about this is that this is actually one of a series of prints the artist did. Well, 36 actually from the series. There were 36 views of Mount Fuji. The other prints show the major mountain of Japan, as you might see it, from all the different parts of the country. So from the countryside to the one we see, a bridge, that was probably in a more populated area. There's one that looks like it's a little snow-covered cabin in the woods. Oh, yes, this one is definitely my favorite. I, I agree. I think one of the things I really like about this artwork, too, is all the movement that is happening. As you look at the wave and how it seems to, at just the moment when it will break, the artist just captures that with just such a sense of dynamic motion. Exactly, and the boat is desperately trying to stay afloat as it goes up into the crest of the wave. It makes you wonder, what's going to happen? Are the little men in there going to capsize? I, I feel like I'm actually worried for them. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm worried too. I love how the artist uses the contrast of the blue waves with the white caps that just gives this sense of foreboding. I find it interesting too how most of the time white and blue are used to represent peace and tranquility. Yes, but here the artist is different. He uses them to represent danger and uncertainty, almost like the uncertainty of what's going to happen to those men in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and the artist uses a color called Prussian blue, which is a European blue. It wouldn't typically be used anywhere other than Europe. Well, and this artist definitely isn't European. Oh no, Hakusai is certainly not a European name by any means. But the artist clearly is inspired by European styles and techniques, like the Prussian blue and also the low horizon line that is also found in European styles. And then majestically standing in the back we have Mount Fuji, above all this turmoil and chaos that we see in the foreground. It's so far away, yet still present in the picture, and not moving like the rest of the elements in the art. It's almost as if it's making a statement of solidarity, like it's the personification of, of strength and power. This definitely is a phenomenal artwork that represents the Japanese woodblocks, but also the effect that Europe had on the artwork of the time. And then I like to use other videos as well, like this animated sketchbook that kind of goes through Hakusai's life of children. The kids really like that. And then I've included as well my multiple choice questions for this work. And some free response questions that could be used as well. That's all.